Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Good evening, Osvaldo Franco. How are you doing, my good friend? Excellent, brother. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. It's been a long time coming. We've had six episodes of Unidentified. You've, you kindly sent me the links. Um, I have to say, I've only watched them... I've watched a couple of them twice, but most of them I've just watched once. Um, and I want to know your views, your thoughts, your genuine feelings around the show well hmm let's see well for the most part i was kind of bored okay to be honest uh it was basically luis elizano going through the motions of ufology's greatest hits which you know we already knew and uh they they they, they selected what they, they they targeted for the different discussions in a way that i found very interesting it, 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 it's like the episodes weren't necessarily information packed, you know. Yeah. Um, like I, you know, and I understand like this was for uh, RDBs, or what I call RDBs, or regular douchebags. You know, <laughs> this is a way to get you know. Those I've, of been, us I've been called one of them. Hmm. I've been called a regular douchebag many times. Oh, you know, you're not. You're nowhere near a regular douchebag. You're not an RDB at all. <laughs> if you're watching this show, you're not an RDB. You're far from it, you know. Um, but uh, basically, this is a way to get, you know, uh, uh, you know, your, your 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 sister that doesn't like this, or your cousin that doesn't like this, or your 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 friend that just doesn't get it to start getting it. But it was it wasn't done in a. I don't know. It, I fell asleep. To be honest, I fell asleep during uh, a couple of the episodes. I did fall asleep for, during one episode as well, but it was very late, and I just thought, let's watch this. I, I don't know if I was bored, because then when I watched it the next day, this is when I say I watched it twice, um, I actually enjoyed that episode. I think it might have been episode four or five, and I thought that's pretty, it was pretty good. One of them was pretty, there was, a, I think three of them was, a, was, was good. I think three of them was really bad. Yeah, I, I wasn't you... like, I wasn't that impressed. I, I, but I, you know, with a lot of those things, I mean, we got a lot of good stuff from it. And the thing is, this I don't know if I had a great effect. Like, like don't get me wrong. Like, uh, I, like they, like TTSA has done some amazing stuff as of late, especially in regards to like how the military has changed, you know, uh, its status for reporting UFOs. Yeah, you know, that's a huge thing. And the Senate hearing, like, don't get me wrong, like, I, I didn't, like, like, TTSA is doing phenomenal things, and they deserve our support and our praise. Really, they do. Okay. Like, there's, like, a, there's a palpable change in how this, I don't know how, it, uh, it, how it's been going down in England. But over here, there's been a public change. It's not really a how. big thing in England at all. This is what the reason why I tend to uh, cover TTSA for England, thinking that because I'm a British channel, I'd get British viewers. But most of my viewers are fr actually from the States or Russia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. Uh, no, Red, you can't get arrested at home. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Let's just... We, Rewind a little bit, though, because if you remember some of the conversations that we've had, we've done two two interviews now on to the Stars Academy, and what what you thought and what I thought they was going to show about the Adam Project, uh, the promises that yeah. have kind of yeah. been not kept, no, in my not, opinion. No, not, not, not even, like, how about this? They, uh, in the first episode, in the beginning... You see a, 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 a scene of a guy with long hair and glasses and like a goatee, and he's holding that shard up that uh, that Hal put off is constantly doing lectures about that yep. they have that to put that's the parts of the bottom half of a crash disc um, made out of material made of materials that works. Uh, uh, they showed that you know in the beginning, but we never heard the Adam anything from the Adam Project, not even its name. Uttered. Uh, is that the Bob White artifact you're talking about? The no, 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 no. I'm talking about the the little two inch sliver. Okay, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like a shard. Yeah, I think I've, uh, I've, I've uh, used. Seven I'll put up, 
that yeah. put off the uh, yeah. electronic. It's excellent. Um, everybody should watch that. Uh, by the way, uh, very informative, more informative than an NFL, unfortunately. Okay, well, but, I'll link uh, it in the description. Oh yeah, no, no that's, that's that's must watch ufology. If you really want to know what's going on, that's a great, you know, that's time well spent. Um, like that's one of my favorite videos. Uh, they they to, were revisiting no, the Bob White artifacts, though, weren't they? They 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 have it. Yeah, no, they like uh, Ellis Autumn has done a bunch of uh, lectures, like you know, it, 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 like that's prominently featured in like you know the photographs of like samples and stuff that have been recovered. Um, the the white uh, uh, shard or, or, or whatever you want to call it, that that weird uh, 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 looks like it's the lag type. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, it's interesting also that uh, it has like these. Uh, speaking of uh, uh, that artifact, is that it has these magnetic poles in it, and it's kind of reminiscent of the uh, of that sphere that was discovered not that long ago. Uh, I mean, back in the seventies. Oh, the um, what's it called now? The something something sphere, and it, the sphere is named after the family. Is it? Is it not? Family? Yes. Yeah. I, why am I not remembering this name? Uh, the top uh, of my head, but uh, a Dyson. But, it, no, not a Dyson. No, no, I'm not thinking of Dyson. Uh, that's something much bigger. <laughs> what was the name of it? Now the Bet Sphere. It's the Bet. Is it the Bet? Yes, sphere? that's it. Bet Sphere. Yes. Bets. Yes, and uh, and uh, like yeah, like like that. So they're they're kind of similar. They're kind of similar in that respect that they have these like weird like magnetic poles in, in the middle. of them. For some reason, it shouldn't be there. If you're wondering why I said Dyson Sphere, it's because I just looked at my vacuum cleaner and that just kind of just... <laughs> Dyson, yeah. No, that's, that's when you... That, that Dyson Sphere is when you encase the, the a whole like, yeah. star system. Yeah, I, 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 that's the that's the thing that... Um, where you cover an, an entire sun. Uh, yeah, that's what they think that, that, that weird anomaly is could possibly be. Well, that but, yeah, it blinks very weirdly. Yeah, 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 very, very odd, and nobody. And I, I, I think recently they found some others uh, that that have weird, similar anomalies. So we're probably going to find out. Either more that, or they're just surrounded by absolutely tons of massive asteroids. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the idea. That cometary uh, or or asteroid matter. Like, that, you know, that would be the logical explanation. Perhaps, yeah. Like maybe there's maybe that's a solar system being formed. And that's yeah. just all the part of particulates, you know, coming together. You know, even though it doesn't seem that way because those stars are, are really old. Yeah. And they seem to have this, which which then, like, leads it to believe that maybe that it is artificial. Because you've had plenty of time to, like, not only develop intelligent life, but for that intelligent advice to, you know, to advance to, like, a stellar state, perhaps. So back to TCSA, then, because we do this all the time. It's because we're good friends. We just generally go on a bit of a yeah. tangent together. Uh, but... <sighs> So the first three episodes, pretty much nothing. It was almost like an introduction for people not in the know. Like like you say, it's to show somebody's sister, brother, mother, uh, introducing people to ufology uh, that have no clue. Um, yeah. But then... It's a deal for us, but for them it's essential. Yeah, so what do you think was done bad? And then what do you think was done very I think well that, I think that the uh, episodes were kind of boring I think that they should have been more uh, information packed they weren't as like like I don't know I, I wanted more meat and less salad yeah but you know what we got we, we got um, that having been said though we got these spheres and, uh, these cubes and these spheres like now um, and it, it, that's amazing. There's, it's been a long time since we've gotten, you know, some type of confirmable new type of UFO, you know. Uh, and that's always, like, you know, great. And uh, that's always really helpful. So there must um, be see-through. So obviously the sphere, is the sphere on the outside? And the cubes yeah, on the inside? Yeah, it's these cubes with, like, these spheres that, like, uh, some of the people are, are, are seeing it that, that the sphere is like an energy field. Yeah, that it's it, it's not like it's not a like a solid okay. sphere, you know, or or or, or, or a sphere, or rather, maybe it could be solid, but not made out of matter, you know, in a conventional sense, some type of like gravity bubble, perhaps, or something, some type of membrane, of some sort. But uh, yeah, it, it's like that was extraordinary, 
And then um, the other thing that was very, very interesting is that they spoke about how uh, these situations that happened with the Italians, but they didn't really go into a lot of details on that case. And there's a lot of very interesting details about, uh, 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 but I, I, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this correctly, Corinna de Corinna, which is the area in Italy where this had taken place back in 2003. Is that with that, the, um, the helicopter that crashed? Yes. Now that is very interesting, but not, well, but, well they say some interesting things about it in the show, but I'm also going to talk about some interesting things about that case they didn't bring up. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff that they, they, they touched on. I they didn't go deep into enough. Like say, like a Rendlesham Forest. Rendlesham Forest, I, like that was not. That was strange best. how that came into it. Yeah, and it was not the best Rendlesham Forest uh, uh, doc I've ever seen, by far. You know, yeah. but uh, you know, but then again, like I guess that's for, you know that's for regular folks to you if, know. If we just touch base. if we just back up to the 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 Italian uh, government, they kind of. Uh, Lou made out that it was uh, the official government, but it wasn't the actual official government, was it? It was it yeah. ex-government. Yeah, quasi-governmental, you know. Yeah. Uh, how things are done, like, you know, a lot of these, you know, uh, uh, some, some stuff is just outsourced because it's easier to hide. You know, or or better to have plausible deniability. For, uh, well, I missed you know? out. I missed out on that because uh, when I first watched it, I saw the words government, uh, Italian government, and I thought, wow, they've got in with the Italian government to see this. But then I watched uh, a video this morning. Uh, what's that guy? The guy with the beard, UFO Jesus, is it UFO? Jesus, yeah. UFO yeah. Jesus. He uses his hands a lot in in his videos. <laughs> um, and uh, he's very excited, and he's talking about, for the first time, it's the first time I've actually seen seen him uh, mention to the Stars Academy in a negative light. And he said that Lou said that it's a um, it was a government uh, Italian government that they was going to see. But then later in the video, the actual narrator corrected it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's ex government, just like yeah. people. You know, like La 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 Lozano and the, yes. the, the gang. Yeah, so it's all they're, ex people. Yeah, they're they're they're, they're uh, TTSA's Italian counterpart. Yes. So 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 when, what I want to know is when do we actually get them to get in with some official government? When are we going to see that? That's a good question. I think uh, that's probably going to come about as like there's other things that are going to be coming out very soon. We're going to get into that later. Uh, really, really uh, awesome stuff. Yeah. Uh, where I think it's going to basically be the impetus for them to start doing something more official because people are like, we're getting into a situation where people are starting to catch on and, in a much bigger way than they have previously. And this is like, I think things are going to like, things are going to start hitting like, uh, I think we're going to get hit critical sooner than later. In a lot of respects, the I think we're gonna—they're gonna have to tell us something. The Podesta bit was very, very short-winded, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. yeah. I, I was. Really, I was really... expecting something magnificent from that. I thought, wow, this is gonna be it. When I saw that little clip where Tom DeLong sits the camera down with John John Podesta, I was thinking, this is gonna be it. This is gonna be one hell of a show. Yeah, and. And it, no, it, was it was literally like he sat down with him for how how long was it in the actual it, it, less than five minutes? It was it was no, it was it was a couple of minutes if that. Yeah, yeah, barely. It, it was it, it was a clip. You know, uh, it, 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 listen, like yeah, like I I don't know if like I'm wondering if like because like we know to the Stars Academy's got a lot more than. You know what they presented and unidentified. They've actually shown stuff on YouTube, and, and you know it's out there. Yeah. You know, you go to the to the Stars Academy website, though. You know, you can see stuff. Um, they tell you that they have. They show you that they have this stuff. The thing is, why aren't you like, like, what's going? Like, like, I mean, 
I guess they're trying to save it for another season. This is what I was going to say. Do you think they expected the ratings to be better and expected there to be very much a demand for season two? Because I don't think the ratings were amazing, were they? Well, no, I think they were... uh, They did well. I think they were number five. Oh, were they? And Yes. I think to start uh, off with it wasn't. It it wasn't doing too well. That's what I heard. Well, no, it's, it's, it's doing fine. Like, they're going to get another season. That's not a, That's good. Uh, an issue. But, yeah, but I would have, like, they have a lot of stuff. I would have I would have done more of an episode for people like us that are into this. You know, that's who, who you wanted to get excited about. Maybe that is season that's two. True. Pardon? Maybe that is season two. Maybe season one is just the education behind it. Yeah, but there's also other, like... There's other issues too concerning this other thing we're going to bring up, because a lot of the things that to the Stars Academy. Oh, uh, are you talking has, about what we've just been speaking about? Yeah, some of the things okay. that to the Stars Academy it, has are, are about to become made public yeah. by uh, somebody else. Yeah, before you bring that up, I just briefly yeah, want to um, want to discuss because uh, I've mentioned this. Uh, I mentioned this this in a live stream actually that no longer exists because. I'd had a little bit to drink. Uh, but Tom DeLong, um, how come he said about five words through that entire season? Well, this is the thing. I don't think that was necessarily a bad idea. Because, like, honestly, it's like Tom DeLong saying, like, you know, I believe in UFOs is basically, the, I mean, it helps because he's a celebrity at the same time. It's, oh, there's a celebrity from California with some weird ideas. That's how that gets played, you know, in the media. Yeah. Another one of these rich, woo-woo people. It's different when it's Luis Elizano taking point. And Tom is there as, like, you know, a businessman and a ufologist and a researcher, you know, that this is his other thing that he does. You know, um, that was kind of necessary, you know, to, to, to make it more of a solid, real thing. It's not... You know, it's not Tom DeLong and, like, you know, some of his buddies that, you know, like, he hangs out at the pub with. This is, you know, like, legitimate, like, you know, like, like, people, like I, I, I was surprised that they, uh, like, in, in the introductions that they gave, that they, they blew up Chris Mellon's pedigree yeah. so much. And that, that's like, you know, and that, like, I would have liked to have seen more about that. That the fact that the scion of one of America's most prominent families is so very much involved in this. And there was de- Deputy uh, uh, Secretary of Defense. You know, that's, you know, like, that's extraordinary. That should, like, you know, that, that's... They need somebody at the top of the triangle, don't they? Don't they? Yeah, no, of course. There's a, listen, things work how they work. You know, there's a, a, <laughs> there's a, a, a top and a bottom to everything. Uh you know, like, if, again, if you want perfect disclosure, you're never going to get it. If you want, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm glad we're making the progress we're making. We're making considerable pro- progress. Is it loaded progress? Probably. You know, most things are loaded. You know, it, it's disclosure brought to you by, uh, you know, people that worked at Lockheed Martin in the Defense Department. You know, but at least it's disclosure. You know, and, and like, they're, they're doing a remarkable job. And they're doing a much better job than the people that are, uh, are, are, are there naysayers and detractors? Did you think it was going to be disclosure? I think that it's. I thought we would get a lot more than what we did. At the same time, we will be getting a lot more than we did, very very short. Uh, so, like, I, I'm wondering if that's like like this is just a primer, it's, it's, you know, just like like uh, show the people this much, and then we'll drop something else on them. And, Another six weeks or so. I thought we was going to get to see the fleet of them. You know, when he's talking about the fleet, there's a fleet. Yes. I thought that's there's, what we were going to get to see. Uh, or, or, you know, and, and we know more about that, though, too. It turns out that the fleet, it turns out that the fleet wasn't a bunch of Tic Tacs. It was actually one Tic Tac and a bunch of those spheres with the squares in them, with the cubes in them. Yeah. So whatever those, those they seem to be like drones. Or maybe you know, they like can it, maybe they control the tic tac. Maybe the tic tac is tac controls. I, I think it's more likely that the tic tac controls them. As like the, the tic tac comes with like a bunch of those around it. Right. You know, like the, like the, the U.S. military has a new jet 
that they're trying to talk about now. They're trying to build. It has a that breaks up into smaller planes. Yes. And then reconnects. It, it, it reminds me kind of like that. It's getting like Transformers, you know? isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's getting like Transformers. I know. I the, know. The, the tech. I mean, I was I was watching this thing with this um, this new car the other day, and the the tech on that actually reminded me of um, the meta materials. The the way it was oh. moving and it was just. I thought, how are they doing that? How are they actually? Oh, there's a, there's a car with a vent. That it, it's basically it's a bunch of collapsing hexagons, and I'm and I'm looking at this thing and I'm like that looks that looks a lot like what Bob Lazar says the door with the door looks yeah like, looks like you know and that was in 1989 you know that there's a, a dude something's up something's up and like if you pay attention you're, you're starting to see you know and it's not it's not you you know there's there's definitely there's like, you know, maybe it's a dotted line, but there's definitely a line connecting these yeah. points. Yeah, George Knapp made, uh, made a little appearance, did he, in, in Unidentified? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like, like George Knapp, uh, George Knapp was, like, one of the great ufologists. Uh, truly just, like, he's a journalist. I don't know if he'd call himself a ufologist, but he is. Um, you know, he's uh, a, a guy that, you know, has done remarkable work. That uh, is, like, you know, the journalist responsible for any of us knowing who Bob Lazar or Area 51, you know, Be- is an art. So before we move on to the new bit of information that's come out, the um, do, do you think it's at all possible, or does it ever cross your mind for a second, that some of these people could be actors? Like, uh, you mean the people in the, the shadows? The people like, in the stuff? interviews, yeah. Um, it could be. It, it could be, like, I mean, like, it's television. Yeah, uh, don't don't uh, get know, me wrong. It, it, I do not want that to be true, but there's sometimes... No, sometimes, no, sometimes that... Yeah, people do reenactments and, and stuff. It's not unheard of. Uh, you know, and, and you also have to protect people's identities. Um... And even sometimes blackface isn't good enough. Like, uh, and I mean, pretty like you know, like, uh, do you remember the first Bob Lazar interview? You could tell that was Bob Lazar if you knew who Bob Lazar. Yeah, was. you could. You know, like even with the shadows, they didn't yeah, even bother the, to the cover his voice up. That's 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 definitely Bob Lazar. You know, there's, you know, we we would be able to pick him out of a lineup from that alone. Yeah. But uh, so like, I, assuming that the people that worked with Bob at the time, you know, could have done the, much the same thing. You know. Um, so, like, it might be more difficult to hide those people's identities. Maybe it's necessary to do it like that. Maybe, you know, they can undo, like, you know, all the blurring. Yeah, I think I would have. it's it's just natural for me to think like that because back in the days where I used to debunk a lot of this stuff, I always think, where's the, where's the agenda here? Somebody's, I always think somebody's got an agenda. Everybody's got an agenda. Absolutely, like, dude. This, no, this is all coming out. All of this UFO stuff is coming out for a reason. Uh, why it's coming out? Uh, there's a bunch of theories. Uh, some are high place theories and others, but uh, you know, uh, this is coming out for, for whatever reasons. It's coming out for a reason, and I, I think that's going to start becoming more and more apparent. You know, I don't think that they're doing this uh, just because it's a good idea. I think that they're doing this because like there's an urgency to this getting done. You know, part of it is you know we're we're, we're overdue for a major sighting. Yeah, the, the uh, most annoying really, the most annoying thing for me is when people say uh, Tom DeLonge's done this company just to make a bunch of money. Well, if you wanted to do that, why not do the easiest thing that he could have possibly done and stayed in Blink One Eight Two, uh, you know, and grown the. Dude, they got a Vegas show, dude. Like, come on. Yeah. They're the, like loaded. Like, dude, Tom, Tom, listen, uh, uh, DeLonge, like you check him out. He's worth uh, an estimated 110 million bucks, and he's a celebrity. He doesn't need UFOs. He doesn't need us. Exactly. You know, this is not something you do. You know, from that position. You know, because there's, you know, unless like you're onto something, and he is onto something. Yeah, but you know, this is this is when I have to. The first thing when I saw um, 
Dr. Greer speak about um, to the Stars Academy and he said, Tom, he thinks Tom DeLong's being used. We spoke about that before while well, everybody's being used. Um, but this is the first time that I've, especially with Tom being so silent, that I kind of thought, wow, this is almost like somebody else has taken over his company in some well, respects. This- well, this is the thing you have to understand. Like everything, you know, Tom has said this. Everything he says has to be like accounted for. Every statement that they make, they, they literally count the words and they bounce it off of like you know these these uh, these people that help them to do this. You know that that are still within government. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they have to follow certain rules. They can't just go willy nilly dropping things off. Like I, I'm wondering if the plans for unidentified were initially bigger, and then maybe they decided to water it down a bit, you know, as it was being released, you know, well, so that because they made they made some promises, dude. Like they uh, on uh, what I would do back when the show was on the air is I would go and I would post on Instagram these synopsises of episodes. Yeah. And episode six, we were supposed to get some video footage. We didn't. And it said there, plain and in, in text. You, you said know? that. You said that in that interview. That you said we're going to get it. Mark my words, it's going to yeah. happen. Yep, and they even said it. They even put it out there in, yeah. into the world that that was. And we got some stills, and not the most exciting stills. But what makes the stills exciting is when you find out what the stills are of, and that the helicopter crashed, and that you see like you know that it was a plasma burn, and yeah. you know uh, that. Uh, uh, the the helicopter was demagnetized as well. Um, this is also not the first time that this has happened. Um, they, this has happened in the UK. This has happened in the United States, uh, where helicopters, police helicopters, usually have had these close encounters with something, have something shot out at them. Yeah, like like literally, this is not the only helicopter that's been uh, taken down by a UFO. Uh, and basically, the helicopter from then on is of no use. You know, it's, it's been demagnetized. It just, like, you know, does not work. And and, and the interesting thing is it, it seems if it is a weapon, it is definitely a non-lethal one because nobody has, you know, died. Have you ever seen the of original these... footage of the Chernobyl uh, helicopter that crashed? No. That, that's how I imagine it being. I, I saw a clip. I'll send you it. Uh, and it's basically it's over the tower and it gets too close and... It just literally it falls out the sky. Yeah, it just falls out the sky, just like that. Uh, um, uh, probably, it's about, sounds about right. Uh, it's just like nothing's hit it, but, but it's just out yeah. Gone. No, no, no. Yeah, it's EM. You know, um, and uh, that's the thing. Like they, uh, you know, and, and that's, it wasn't just like you know that was uh, interesting. Like you know the, the thing with the helicopters, I would like them to say like yeah, this has happened in the US as well. You know, and, and and also in the UK. Um, but Tom Delon, has, Tom Delon made out on uh, Instagram that we were going to see an helicopter fall out of the sky. Not that I'd want, not that I wouldn't want anybody to get hurt or, or, or to see that. Yeah, but. no, but like, dude, dude, I don't want, I don't want aliens to die in a crash. But you know what? If it's going to happen, and I can be around at the time, I want to be around at the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's as that's unfortunate the thing. as that is. We are curious you know? uh, creatures. As yeah, I'd, I'd rather it be a nice landing and peaceful, and they go back to where they came from, and I can tell everybody. But if you know, you know, if, if you know, whatever, you know, we take what we can get. <laughs> yeah, we do. And sometimes we have to take it with a grain of salt. Or two. Uh, <laughs> so you've got some news for us. Um, oh yeah, but oh, hold on. Let's uh, 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 going back to the, just before we wrap up this up. Uh, go, uh, there's some things that were not discussed in Unidentified uh, concerning the Italian case that are really, really important. Okay. Um, and, and it's it's really really odd. Now, um, in this episode, they speak about how uh, they found out where these uh, uh, the frequency in which these uh, UFOs operate where their technology operates. And uh, one thing they don't talk about is the fact that uh, the, every time that these things were utilizing this, this type of energy or making the signature, it was releasing about 15 gigawatts of energy, wow. which is an enormous amount of energy. 
That's a rough. That's more or less kind of the energy to launch a space shuttle into orbit. And they were doing this quite a bit. So that's like a, that's a large amount of energy to just really nearly be thrown around. But somebody was doing exactly that in 2003 off the coast of Italy. Um, and it wasn't, uh, and they did extensive stuff and they did research and it turns out that this anomaly goes back decades. So it wasn't, uh, they tried to say it was perhaps us, the United States, but no, it wasn't us. Hey, what are you, you saying know? that that could be the stuff that may have caused the fires? Yes. And that's the thing. Yeah. Like, uh, there's a series of fires that happened all over Italy in that area and people started to panic. And it's interesting that they didn't go with this because, like, uh, if you read Tom's books, a lot of the themes, that are, one of the things that's reoccurring is that when UFOs show up, people freak out and start religions. And that's basically what happened with this, is that uh, this is an Italian community, uh, and uh, basically they went to the church. And to the Catholic church, they, they got a special, uh, everybody was panicking, they, they got a special uh, prayer from the Pope uh, to, like, you know, to help everything calm down. And uh, and people were afraid, but it wasn't like you know. But it wasn't just these weird fires going off everywhere. It was also this huge amount of UFO activity in the skies over here yeah. at the same time. You know, but uh, people over there they, they think in terms of like religiosity, like God and demons and things like that. So that's where they went to, you know, initially. Uh, and it's odd that he didn't bring that up because he he talks about that a lot, uh, long. But uh, that's what it is. But anyway, they also speak about how the apparently the, the alien drone or craft or whatever had to drop out of cloak before it fired on the helicopter, which is very, very interesting. That's a bit like, like um, Star Trek. Star Trek. Yeah. It is Star Trek. Yeah. The Romulans and the Klingons can't fire when cloaked. In fact, uh, uh, was it Undiscovered Country was about a, 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 a ship that could. Uh, it was one of the, the, the whole things, but uh, yeah, it was that's very interesting. Um, and the fact is, they, they know about the uh, the frequency in which this technology operates, which means that you can start trying to listen in for that. You can detect things with that. You can look for that signature and triangulate, so you can learn where they they are, where they're coming from, where the, fre- you know where the frequency is coming from. Yeah, but not only that. Theoretically, and I don't know how difficult this would probably exceedingly difficult, but there's a possibility that maybe you could tap that. You know what I'm saying? It's try to uh, see if you can decode any type of transmissions or something, you know, from these things. Like you could probably do some type of like, uh, uh, of, of like uh, espionage, if you will. Like, you know, like, like a, a hack, if you will. Yeah, speaking uh, about um, the religious side of it and the demons. In one of the episodes, I can't remember which episode it was, it br- briefly somebody said they're demons. Mm. Well, yeah, well, let's see. You know, that whole situation, like, and uh, Elizondo talks about that quite a bit. There are people so what's that, he mean like, by that? What, what does he mean? Well there's, well, there's a lot of religious people that are involved in this at the governmental level, which turns out is, like, not, because one of the reasons why we're having issues. Um... Who speaks a lot about this is a guy named Nick Redfern, who I can't recommend higher. Uh, one of the best who follow this out there. And uh, Nick Redfern talks about this group of conservative Christians in the United States called the Collins Elite. And they exist. And these are guys that were you know, really, really powerful people in uh, our intelligence community, but they are conservative Christians. And they basically say that this technology can't exist Therefore, it is magic, and magic is evil because it's not from God, and it's, you know, thus, if it's not from God and it's evil, these must be demons, and these are demonic entities, and and that's what it has to be. The thing is, though, is that's not what's going on. Demons don't need metamaterials to get around. You know, they don't need gravity uh, 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 envelopes and things of of, of that nature to, to, you know, they would repel themselves. They're, they're, they're demons. They would just like show up like ghosts and things like that. But that's that's not what that, what's happening. They're getting crashes. There's technology involved. Uh, it operates Unless on they're extremely clever and they they want to. Um, they uh, want. Yeah, I know. But that's that's the same. That's thing, one of the that's theories. The same type of, 
that's the same type of like I don't know what conservative Christians are like in England, but I do <laughs> a whole lot know how they are in the United States, and, and that's like that sounds like that. It's, it's the same type of uh, logic they use when they talk about evolution. That they said like they, like, like they literally believe that Satan went around putting dinosaur bones into the ground to fool everyone into believing that the earth is ancient and that evolution is the truth. Yeah. That is literally what they it's either, okay, it's either, it's either, listen, it's either advanced technology or it's, it's Satan being a dick. I used to fossil hunt when I was a kid. I, I, it was my hobby. What? I used to fossil hunt when I was a kid. No, uh, when I was, when I was a little boy, I used to... I used to go <laughs> fossil hunting, and I, I used to find them. Yeah, see your little fish back there? That's a demon. <laughs> that well, have you, have you seen its face? I know, see? Christians were right. Look at that. That is a demon Clearly. fish. You know, but it's, it's, it, it's basically... It's an old argument whose time is gone, and I think that like, the powers that be recognize that, which is why things have been going forward. You know, yeah. it, it's uh, like, you know, uh, like I, 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 I don't see like, you know, humanity becoming more religious over time. And then, like religion was a, uh, is trading wheels for science. And now we got the science good and running. We no longer need the training wheels and we're going to leave them behind. And even if you insist on keeping them on, at some point they will fall off. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't think, and I, pff. Even even top scientists, I don't think they could say that there's no such thing as a higher being or even, I mean, but my philosophy behind it is if I was God, yeah, why would I stop at one planet? Oh, yeah, no, that's, that's an awful waste of space. And, and I mean, and that's a part of the thing, too. They want us to be, they, they have so, like, in the religion, like, there's like this concept of the divinity of man, which I, I, I'm still searching for. I haven't seen a lot of that myself. Uh, I, 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 a lot of this, like this language, like religious concepts are loaded. They're they're, they're loaded, and they're self-satisfactory and self-serving, and they're inaccurate. Like things that are self-satisfactory and self-serving, you know. And uh, we're making decisions. We can't make decisions based on that anymore. There's too many of us. There's too few resources. Uh, we know too much, you know. And we're learning even more to sustain that type of worldview or, or, or actual universal view. I, I definitely don't think that we, you can discard the spiritual world, though, because I do think there is something. Oh, I no, definitely I, think there's I something like to it. This it. Way. Spirituality is what you. Uh, spirituality is like religion. It's what you do when you don't have enough information. Does that mean that there isn't truth in them? No, there are. There's truth in them, but I, you know, but I don't. Like, I look at it this way. Like, are there ghosts or are there extra-dimensional entities? I am in favor of extra-dimensional entities. Okay. That makes a lot more sense to me than just, you know, you know, uh, uh, like the standard, you know, ghost theory. Uh, I think that, like, you know, like, yeah, like, you know, are, are there psychic powers? Yes. You know, but that's also science. You know, thankfully we have Hal Putoff. He proved that, you know, with his stuff, you know, at SRI. Um it seems like the more we apply science to these things that are mystical, you know, the better off we are. We come out of, out of it with these even better things than the old things that we were clinging on to, you know. Uh, I uh, like well, then again, you know, I'm not very religious. I, I come from a science background. I'm I'm pro science. Like it, like that's my faith. If if you want to go, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, uh, and 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 I'm a bit of a fascist when it comes to that. I I know my faith is correct. You know, like I do. You know, and and I'm and and and, and even if you because disagree that makes with me sense publicly, to you. No, no, no. But even if you disagree with me publicly, you know I'm right because we're having a conversation on on Wi-Fi, on a cell phone. You know, uh, uh, technology is just getting better. This, like, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. You know, I've, I, I've, I've, got a, I've got a hovering lamp. That's right. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it gets better and better. It's not stopping. But, I mean, and, and less and less praying, too. <laughs> but but maybe, you know, I don't, I don't mean to go off course from uh, discussing unidentified, but maybe a higher being gave us these toys to play with. 
Oh yeah, but that's the thing. If there's a god, he's a physicist. And who created God? You know, huh? He's probably trying to figure that out. Uh, you know, he's, or, he's or, trying to find out who created him. Yeah, basically. And the guy, that. and the guy or girl that created him, is trying to. Yeah, well, that's the thing. There, there's there's indications of multiple big bangs. Yeah. That have occurred, you know. So that's so like like you know like you know take the rip off Battlestar Galactica, but this has happened. Oh, I love Battlestar Galactica. Best one of the best shows ever. I like, love 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 that show. Which one though? Uh, the original or? I I love I love. I, I, I have warm feelings for the original Lauren Green, but the... The, the, the new one. The, the, oh, it was so fantastic. Yeah, Everybody brilliant. was great. Everybody was great. I love each one of those people in that show. Every yeah. one of them. Yeah. Like, with perfectly casted, this fantastic stories. Over too quickly, but I'd rather it be over and done with and brilliant than... You know, continued on, you know, beating a dead horse like the Star Wars. Indeed, indeed. Uh, mate, we are starting to drift. We are starting to drift oh, away from the okay. subject. Come on, let's get back on point, man. Going back, yes, back to matters earthly <laughs> ish. Um, or back to the uh, real aliens. Uh, well, anyway, like I was saying, uh, unidentified was okay. It wasn't great. It was kind of disappointing in the fact that I wanted to see more. And they and To the Stars Academy has a lot more. Uh, I think they should have shown more. Uh, but they did a lot of really important stuff. Um, there is a change, at least in the American media, which was like really really toxic towards this beforehand. Um, like every ever since then, uh, every couple of days is a major new UFO. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, story, and now we're having situations where, like, uh, we're, hit, we're hitting a critical mass. Uh, Joe Rogan's interview with uh, Bob Lazar helped out a lot. Uh, all of these things. The, the I uh, guess. Uh, Jeremy Corbell's doc, huh? The I guessed. Yes, that's right, man. Hey, man, that's right. You called it, bro. One month before. It. But it was it was obvious. It was it was if it, it had to happen. Yeah, I just wish there was a, like a facility to be able to put a bet on it happening. Oh yeah, no, that's right, Lloyd's of London. You should have got in. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but anyway, so they uh, um, uh, yeah, so like all of these things have helped, and uh, it, it now we have a situation where people are. are Going to invade Area Fifty One. We got about a million. Oh yeah, let's let's people. talk about that. Let's talk about that. Yes. Now that is great. I, I think that's awesome. It's it's it, it it's a bit like how can I say it? it it's uh, um, do you not think it's a bit extremist? I no. I think that there's. I listen. A lot more people are into this than we think, and yep. are are. You know, and care about this. A lot more people know about it uh, also now, and I and that's going to continue to grow. And as more ev- information is, uh, comes out, big things are coming eminently. Um, What's the date? The date of the raid, September. Uh, September uh, is it twentieth? Right. I so, Well, this is the thing. Like, I uh, I come from a. Uh, I started. Are you going? No. No, honestly, dude, they're they're going to at this point now. They 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 want to invade the wrong part of Area Fifty One. That's not even near S Four. That's like Area Fifty One proper. That's not like the other side of the ridge, with the Howlett Out Mountain. That's where Bob worked. And even then, that's you know, if, that's assuming, and that's like you know, the facility circa nineteen eighty nine. Who knows if that stuff is still there? Who started this you know? off? It started this. Uh, I, it was. It started off as a joke. You know, uh, uh, and and it's still kind of a joke, but uh, it's kind of like like I think they're trying to like uh, the, the people that are, that, that are involved in it. Yeah, it's kind of ha ha, but uh, I think they still they care more about it than they're they're letting on. And I think uh, this is kind of you know built up because of that. I think people are starting to pay attention, or I think even people that you know a lot of people get into this and then they stop you know because of frustration. You do and know they that they'll up. get nothing from it. Yeah, yeah, and then you and then you go off, and then all of a sudden breakthroughs start happening, and you remember, oh, I remember when I was really into that, and they're like, holy shit, they found a what? 
Next thing you know, you're right back in, you yeah. know, but armed with more information. And, and, and now it's becoming a thing where, like, you know, like, it, it's, it's becoming popular. Uh, well, I even is... noticed, even, my, even myself, people are, like, coming up to me that are asking me questions in the street. You know, uh, friends of mine are asking other friends. They're asking them to ask me questions about these matters. Yeah, this is you know, the like same this. thing for me. I mean, there was there was a time when I just thought because I started out very much into the subject and I I picked up so many dirty habits. On um, I was looking at Mars images, looking at Moon images, making out things that weren't there. Some there, of the, yeah, you can listen when nobody tells you anything. You sort of make shit up again. Like it's religion again. Yeah, when you don't get any answers, but you know something's going on. So you that, sort of start piecing shit together, and you, the thing is, you do. It, it's kind of like like most people aren't trained as scientists, so they don't really know how to do like you know a proper study. And the thing is, if you're going to be doing ufology, you have to study how to how science works. Not so much spirituality. In fact, it's the other problem with spirituality. People go into spirituality because it gives you fast, loose answers. But to get back on but the then, subject of the the Facebook thing with the Area Fifty One. Yeah. Do you not think there'll be just some people, or most of them, I would say 98% of the people that will be there will be clueless about ufology? Yeah, or, well, that's that's the thing. Like, like I, I would also put in like that group of people that are clueless about ufology, people that are into ufology. Yeah. Because a lot of those people are into, like, garbage ufology. Do you remember that? Part, Sorry to interrupt, mate. You remember that scene from um, what's that film? Independence Day, where there's that woman on top of the skyscraper holding yes, that, that. That's what I imagine these people to be like that go to Area Fifty One. You know, I don't yeah, think they get. Know, I mean, like they're not. They're they're just sort of doing this on a whim. Area Fifty One is like, dude, it's the high, high arid desert. It's about the size of Connecticut. Uh, it, it's got all sorts of crazy shit there. Plus, it's radioactive. Like, really, like, it's radioactive. It's one of the yeah. reasons why it's a great place to hide something there. There's no water, it's too hot, and uh, you stand there too long, you, you die of cancer. It's where they filmed the, the moon landings. <laughs> well, that's what they say. <laughs> that is not true. That is not true. No, no, no. no. America, I, I have, the I'm... moon, and it is ours. We own the moon. The 51st state. Hey, I was just joking. We licked it. We licked it. It's ours. You, you, you licked the moon? Yeah, we licked the moon. They don't talk about that. It's, it's in, uh, it's in, how would it's you, in uh, Neil Armstrong's memoirs. How, how could you lick the moon? Uh, they brought a piece in. Oh, I, I, to be fair. It, I, if I, I, they, they threw it out the back. Yeah, I'd lick but, it as well. I'd lick anything. Same here. Uh, it's, well. It's what one does when you're on the moon, uh, apparently. But, uh, yeah, no, they... Uh, it, oh, man, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. That's fine, we talk about licking the moon. Oh, yes. Let's, let's just keep it on that. Yeah. That's now, we were talking about Facebook, and uh, you think it's a great idea. I kind of disagree oh, with yeah, you no, there. No, no, no this, is the, this, oh, this is my point. The cool part about this is that you have about a million and a half people right now that are willing or, or say they're willing to go to s4 i mean go to, to area 51 and demand answers but i would rather see what i think would help ufology a lot more is that we had maybe 10 15 or twenty thousand of those people do a nice organized legal march on washington yeah. that's the optics we need we need to be able to go like uh, uh, to the capitol you know in huge numbers a sea of people Demanding the truth about this, and not in, and not in a, a tongue-in-cheek way that this uh, Storm Area 51 thing is being handled. But I mean, in a legitimate, you know, citizens with a, 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 a an open grievance with their government. Yeah, yeah. You know, ha in unison trying to get it addressed by its government. So I told you uh, that that I've been to uh, an RAF base recently uh, over the yes. weekend. Yeah, I went in and I uh, saw a Eurofighter. My little boy sat in the cockpit with my best friend um i was lucky enough he got me a pass for that he he works in the RAF. now when we turned up at the gates there was a guy there on the gates with a gun no word of a lie slightly aimed down 
but it felt like it was aimed at us when we were driving in. The gun was because like it was. that. He was like that. Now, these guys are going to go to Area 51. This is just a small RAF base. Oh, no. that we're oh. Dude, they, they, dude, those guys that are, dude, all those guys are Delta. They'll be ready. Guys, they will be ready. Those for... guys are Delta. Those are the baddest of badasses. This is, you know, the, period. Mate, this is my issue with it, though, that people may get hurt. And that's my issue with it. it, it, it all, all it listen, takes. I don't. I, I. I don't think that the the U.S. military is not going to open fire on American citizens, especially in the country. But uh, okay. So, what, know, so, it, so what happens if a bunch of them break the fence and they start running a riot and running loose and they all run well, in? You know what? What's going to happen is is that uh, they probably did not bring enough water. They probably yeah. did not bring enough supplies. Yeah. They sure as hell didn't bring enough uh, 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 suntan lotion. Toilet and, paper. Dude, yeah, all of this. All of this. Basically, it's going to be like Occupy Wall Street. It's going to be like, you know, it's a great idea. People are going to come. There are going to be hippies and drum circles and shit. But it's going to break up rather quickly, you know, as soon as people's skin starts peeling. Yeah. And, you know, and it's not going to be fun. It's going to be. I mean, they do. They they chose Area 51 for a very good reason, and this is exactly why. You know, and it's gonna like no, and and not, not only that, all the good shit is well underground. You're yeah. not gonna, you're not getting in there. I doubt anyone's gonna actually. You might get past the fence, and I doubt there's gonna be any penetrating of anything. You know, uh, uh, so, critical. So, also a you little know? concerned about time because we've been going about an hour. So if. You, we we save the best to last. Well, I think it yeah. definitely is, and I'm going to leave a link. But can you explain? Okay, exactly? so for those of you like Ali and myself that were more than a bit disappointed with Unidentified, you're in luck because there's a special treat coming for people like us that really, really are into this. Uh, legendary ufologist. Lee Spiegel has teamed up with legendary documentary filmmaker James Fox, who uh, you'll remember from Out of the Blue and I Know What I Saw, really to some of the best UFO documentaries ever. They, they teamed up together and they have produced something extraordinary. It's called The Phenomena. It is a two and a half hour documentary. Uh, in this documentary, which is... Uh, they are going to show us the metamaterials. They're going to show us the research that's being done on the metamaterials. Uh, but not only that, they've also found like, extraordinary stills, documents, and a piece of legendary UFO video that no one has been able to find. They have. And all of this is going to be combined into basically a two and a half hour documentary that Basically, everybody that has heard about it or seen parts of it is saying is extraordinary, including myself, because I have seen part of this documentary. That's what I've just been watching. That's right. And Very that's good. what hope, but everyone else is going to be watching. Turns out James Fox has the middle hour of the documentary and the, 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 uh, the intro to the documentary up on his uh, on a, a channel on uh, Vimeo, so we're is, gonna put what's, up, up. What channel is that on? Uh, uh, it's James Fox's personal, uh, like like he has uh, Vimeo. Uh, he has a channel on there. Oh, is that that's the actual? So that is the channel. The 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 link that you sent me. Yes, that right. that is the link, and uh, basically it's a, the. I will put that of, link down in the description. Yes. It's a middle hour of the of the uh, of the documentary, so there's about it's two and a half hours. So it's basically there's two 45 minute segments from the documentary that are missing that are going to be put in during the release. And this documentary also, speaking about the release, what's really exciting about the release is that for the first time in decades, this is going to be a UFO documentary with a theatrical release. There's 700 theaters in the United States are, that are going to be showing this documentary. It's being produced by The Orchard, who also produces uh, 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 Jeremy Corbell's documentaries and the uh, documentaries that Stephen Greer puts out. Um, this is going to be amazing. From what I've seen, it's like, like 
already it, it's phenomenal it is like i i cannot give a higher possible uh recommendation for this documentary um and this is you know that's this is a, a, a like i said it's the middle hour there's there's more coming from it but it's what is available is extraordinary and not only that he also put in a clip for the for the the, the, the beginning of the of the film and it, it's powerful it is probably the most powerful intro to any UFO documentary I've ever seen. Um, like I like this is the treat that we were looking for. This is like this is the meat and potatoes, you know, for 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 the loyal uh, people that you know really really care about this subject and have put our, our lives and our times and our fortunes, you know, into trying to resolve this. Um, anyway, it's called the uh, it's called the phenomena. Uh, it's going to be coming out soon. Uh, they're going to be doing, uh, I, I think, a sneak preview or showing some more stuff at uh, the International uh, UFO Conference they're going to have in, uh, UFO Congress, pardon me, in uh, New Mexico. Uh, but uh, with that link, you're going to actually see this before those people do next month. Or at least a good chunk of it. It will be in the description. It is, I've watched about... 30 minutes of it so far and what i did find interesting is it's got the the first um we, we spoke about this the first sighting of a tic tac ufo oh yes now that's again this is so well researched okay check this out now for those of us that are debating the origins of the tic tac uh whether or not that's ours or theirs uh Turns out somebody's seen one land, and it's actually from one of the most famous UFO cases ever. Uh, there was a, uh, back in the 60s, uh, there was a uh, police officer by the name of Lonnie Zamora who saw a tic tac shaped UFO land. He called it egg. He officer. called it an egg. Yeah, he called it an egg. Well, but same thing. White, uh, oval shaped, reticular, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and basically, it landed, and two of these beams got out. And not only that, he saw an insignia on the side of the ship. He, had, uh, he gave their position. This was a big deal case when it came out. And it turns out that the military asked him not to talk about the insignia. They actually floated a fake version of the insignia, and that's what's been floating around in ufology for like a generation and a half, two generations, and now we have proof that that's not what the symbol looked like. It looked like this, and it comes, at, you know, and all of this is coming out right after we're getting footage of these these similar, like almost the same ship, but you know, 2015. You know, like, that's extraordinary. That is like, and that's in, 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 in fact, there's more information about that in the video that has been linked. Like you're in for a treat. And it also has the uh, interviews with the pilots, like um, oh, yes. unidentified, but a lot older. Oh yes, and and uh, in the in the, the beginning uh, in the intro, they, there's this really phenomenal direct looking at you in the camera, uh, impassioned statement by none other than Harry Reid, which is you know like like it like like this is it, folks. Like this is it, like like. They, you're getting. We're finally going to get the meta materials. Uh, finally, we're going to see some some type of footage. I don't know what. Uh, I'm hoping. I'm hoping, and I, you know, and anything would be great. But I'm hoping it's the Edward Air Force Base footage. Because I know James Fox was looking for that. And there is a copy of it in private hands. And but the man is just holding on to it. Yeah. Wasn't um, Edgar Mitchell in in the beginning? No. No, it wasn't. That, that, no, this is not Edgar Mitchell. No, no, this no, no. Guy. No, I'm, I'm. That's another link you sent me. I've just watched. I have just watched the link you've just sent me, but there was one. No, I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that. Um... But yeah, dude, this is like. Do we have like the the stuff that's coming out eminently is extraordinary. Um, it, it's like. It's a wonderful time to be a ufologist. Who was the, really, really exciting. It wasn't that. Who was the guy in the beginning of the fir, in the first five minutes? And I'm sure it's one of it was one of the astronauts, and I can't remember his name. But he was he was talking about when he was flying an aircraft, not in space. I'm sure, he was. 
I could be wrong. Could be wrong. I'm, I'm wrong the majority of the time, but I'm sure I've seen this guy before. I'm sure he's, he was in the space program. Who was the guy in the beginning of it? And he, he said that he saw something and it had no wings. No, it wasn't that. No, are you sure it wasn't? Uh, was it favor? No, not in. Uh, no, not in. Not in unidentified. In what you in the link you've just sent. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. Uh, uh, One second, I'm going to find it. Let's do it. It's going to do my head in. It was. Military aircraft also encountered the strange fleets. In One second. You carry on talking, Oz, because I've got to find this guy. Oh, sure. Um, no, 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 Gordon, Gordon Cooper. Gordon Cooper, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, okay, no, but, uh, yeah, this, this is, like, there's a lot of phenomenal stuff. Even the, like, even the stills that they're using in, in the phenomena are better than the stills we got from uh, uh, Unidentified, and they're a lot closer, you know? Yeah. And, and this is the thing. I'm wondering why, like, because, like I said, we saw... A piece of one of the, these these uh, 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 retrieved items in the first episode of Unidentified. We didn't see this. They're trying. Maybe they're trying to make a second season, but a lot of that stuff is going to be coming out in a month ish or so when this you know documentary hits. So like, why like unless they didn't know, why would they wait? Yeah. Like I would have been, you know, I, I, I would have like, I would have done something, and if I were them, I would try to like, you know. You're going to burn some type of interference or get out ahead of this. Uh, but, you know, uh, again, I, I, who knows what their the decisions make or were being made. You know, perhaps they couldn't do what they needed, wanted to do, but they had a more ambitious plan and scaled back. Yeah, it's interesting, man. I think, I think it, it, it will make a phenomenal show. Um, and I think... Season- I mean, I'll watch it. I, you know, I'm not going to... Yeah, see, season season two of Unidentified needs to kind of like knock it up a little bit of a gear now. I think. Yeah, no, but, no, no. We need to we need to see a lot more because there's some com- now, the mm-hmm. competition is. Uh, yeah, the, the, the people are going to start coming out of the woodwork, and it's odd because like some people have some impressive stuff. Yeah. Some people have some incredible stuff, and it's odd because like a lot of the legendary things, like the Bex Sphere, uh, yeah. uh, you know. Are, are coming back. Dyson Sphere. Yeah, Dyson Sphere. <laughs> yeah, that too, right? Like, yeah. That, that bet sphere. And, and, and cubes and spheres. It's great. The military had that bet sphere for a bit, yeah. didn't they? The Air Force or something. Or was it the Navy? One of them took it off them and it was never the same when they got it back. It was the back. Navy, yeah, dude. Then, see, now that's another. That would make a great film right there that happened to that family. Um, they had a, a real. Like, and, and, and it's. And it's weird because a lot of these people that have had their stories of people that have like legitimate, interesting artifacts, and they hear the same like people from the military keep trying to steal it. You yeah. know, they tell this same story, and it's not just anecdotal. Like these people sometimes get into lawsuits with the military and are forced to give back the shit that they stole. But and when sometimes it comes it back, it's empty. Back altered. Yeah. They, they... You know, like, it's like if you can't have it, they'll break it and send it back. to you. I mean, they probably just gave them back a metallic ball. <laughs> or something, yeah. Like, they even said, the, the Betts family even says, like, sometimes they wonder, is this the, the one that, you know, is this the original one that they give us, you know, they trade that in for, like, you know, some uh, piece of garbage or, or, or one that wasn't in uh, a such good condition, you know? And then it's, and then it's weird things, too. Like, these people talk about getting harassed by who would turn out to be Russians at the same time. It's like, it, it's, it's very, and it's the same stories again and again. But you don't hear about them unless you do the real, like, deep research. Yeah. Or you end up meeting one of them and you ask them, you know, uh, what happened. And a lot of those people, they don't want anything to do with this. They're not ufologists. They were regular folks that had something extraordinary, you know, from the sky come down. And they got a piece of it. And then, like, well, nothing but problems came out of it for them, for the most part, you know? So be- before we shoot off, um, have you, if you had any advice... For to the Stars Academy, what would you give them? Give us some more flash. Give us something like that was. It was. It was. I don't know. It, it, it was kind of anticlimactic. What was released? It was very interesting. Yeah, and it was useful. 
It was interesting and useful, but it's anticlimactic. And like, and and when you're gonna, like, I don't know, maybe it was a typographical error or something. But when you you got video, say you got video. Don't give me stills instead of video. You they, know, they um, definitely got more video. They must have. Oh yeah, they do. They do, and we know it. Um, but I don't know. I want to see something more engaging, something more interesting. Um, I want to I want to see the Adam Project. And, and it's fine. That's what I want to see. Like, 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 that's like the most critical thing, you know, is, is uh, Adam Project and its findings. I think that's, like, you know, that's really what we need. And that's really like that and the, the, uh, the, uh, the old uh, lost UFO footage is coming out is really what's going to make uh, the phenomena like a big deal in ufology. A lot of people aren't talking about the phenomena right now. That's going to change it's going to change really soon, and then I think we're going to be all talking about uh, the phenomena a whole lot more when it comes out. If I'd have seen something on the Adam Project, what I wanted to see, uh, it might have made me uh, invest on this next uh, opportunity that they've just given. Exactly. That's the other thing, too. Like, dude, tell us you have what? Yeah, we're studying and then do a little thing about metamaterials. And then have Hal talk about engineering the space-time metric and, and and stuff like that. And then people are going to be like, whoa. And in fact, it's kind of odd because they sort of, like, if you look at uh, how they're selling the shares now, they seem to have dialed back a bit. Like yeah, how's that working? Because they, they've they reopened the investment, haven't they? So they stopped yes. the investment and they've now saying that you can invest again. So how's it work this time? Well, no, 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 no. It's the same deal. Uh, $5 a share. It's about a... It's, it's, you need like, I think $200, $200. Now it's three fifty. Right. Okay. For the, for the minimum investment, but it's basically five bucks a share, uh, a plus, uh, uh, shares, uh, largely the same thing. <laughs> They're really, um, promoting their, uh, their television sh uh, show aspect and the movie aspect, uh, of it, you know, uh, this time more so than, uh, you know, like like Adam Project and like the, the the really interesting stuff. You know, and 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 the building of that the dark. If Tom DeLonge, because he's doing Bob Lazar's book, isn't he? Is he publishing oh, yes. Bob Lazar's That's book? The thing. Yeah, uh, he's publishing Bob Lazar's book. Um, and it's interesting because he had the book done, be I think, before Jeremy Corbell's doc. Yeah. This film. So if he's getting, so, like, if they're getting into film. And so, so to the Stars Academy, it's never, it's never. Tom's never shied away from saying that it's going to be very much within the entertainment business. Maybe, maybe we'll do a proper film uh, about Bob Lazar. Oh yeah, like there's, like there's been rumors. Like uh, uh, I, I think uh, Matt Damon had the rights. Yeah, Matt Damon w w wanted to play Bob Lazar. I, I heard that. And he would have been great. He might be a bit old, but like you know, to play a twenty-nine-year-old physicist. But, I don't know. They can uh, make, they can they can make people. No, he look, looks look great, and like it's Matt Damon. You know, uh, 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 suspend disbelief. Yeah, uh, you know that's not the most that's not the most controversial part of that story. <laughs> but um, you know, um, but yeah, man. Like I, like I, I, I honestly, we're going to see a lot more UFO shows. We're gonna see a lot more UFO documentaries as it starts to sink in. Like, like, dude, I, I like, I would not be shot. Like, the Rendlesham Forest should be a film, yeah, in itself, or, or, or a miniseries on Netflix or something. You know, just because of all of the stuff that happened, it's it, it, it's a bit too much to, to put in like two hours, two and a half hours. Yeah, I need you know? to, I need to get. I say such a massive drive to get to Rendlesham Forest from where I live, but I'm gonna do it because I've just I've just drove eight hours to to visit my mate in the RAF, so I can drive eight. I think it's about I think it's about six hours or something away. It's just like I'd have to stay the night in Rendlesham yeah. Forest to make the most of well, that. Well, then do a do a do a sky watch then. Yeah, or attempt a CE five. And see what happens. I mean, it is the spot. Apparently, there's not that much there to see. You know, there is literally there's a giant UFO uh, made out of metal in the middle of the forest. Uh, with oh yeah, with, yeah, the photo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's, there's not that much to it. But I think I need to go out there, maybe with a a, um, a radiation detector. You know, just to try and pick a bit up. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that hey, dude, that helps. You'd be surprised what you can't see. 
games. You know? are, are those things expensive? Uh, you can get an app. Really? Your phone yeah. can pick it up? Yeah, you can, yep, your phone can be a Geiger counter. Yeah, you... I've never trusted those bullshit apps. I've, I've always thought, you know, that's just gonna, there was one that said it was a hand. When I first got an iPhone back in the day when they first came out, there was one that said it's a hand heater. And I was like, what? And it came on this like red warm here, and I thought, oh, it actually works. But it was it was just because it was using my screen that much <laughs> and the power of the phone that it flattened my battery. But it, it, well, I'm it, saying, man, well, you can go to you can go to a military surplus spot. I'm pretty sure you can get something cheap. Yeah, I need to do that. Yeah. I need to do that. Anyway, man, I'm gonna say good night. God bless and mind the bugs don't bite. And we will get together for another video very soon. Any ideas what that video might be, Oz? Um, hmm. Is there any chance that we could do that video that I've been wanting to do with you for quite a while now about the the greys, the alien greys? I think we should wait until we... Let's wait until after the, uh, the uh, uh, phenomena comes up. Let's... let's, let's see how much more into physical reality this becomes and then we can have some more conversations about that and there's some other things that I'm going to be bringing up as well of, uh, that are very interesting and uh, some things uh, to show as well. Because you've and got a lot of information, I mean, you're just holding back and, and, that, yes. and I would not release any of that information but i've had you've given me some sneak peeks and uh i've given yeah. my, my word that i won't speak about it, but um you're a fascinating fellow and i think uh, the more we get your name out there again i think you should have your, your own uh youtube channel um and d once we get all these stories out on my channel first day though because i'm very selfish <laughs> like no <laughs> Now, the, the no, well, intriguing it's stories, it's intriguing stories, honestly, mate. It's um, something something for you guys to look forward to. Ladies and gentlemen, Osvaldo Franco, ufologist, ufologist from the United States in New York. But don't hunt him down. <laughs>